Hey, what's up guys, it's Rico, and today I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm actually gonna interview one of my good friends and actor, Eddie Martinez. You might recognize him from The Sinner on the USA Network. He plays detective Vic Soto. And he's been on a ton of TV, from NCIS to Hawaii Five-O to a film with Nicolas Cage. Now, of course, because we're in quarantine, we can't be face-to-face, -face, so we're gonna do this interview via Zoom. to arrest you? Go home. Go. And let's give it up for Eddie. What's up, my man? How's it going? Thank you. Thank you, Rico. Thanks for having That's a great intro, man. Thank you for having me. <laughs> dude, it's good to see you. I know, unfortunately, we can't see each other in person. I like your backdrop, dude. I like your backdrop, though. You I look like, like you're like in a walk. Look at that. It looks like wood, but it's not. <laughs> trying to look good trying to make this look good so you don't see the back of my my room over here uh, well you look good dude you look good you're hey so tell me good. what are you doing right now during the quarantine i mean we can't be face to face because you know we're all in lockdown but where are you and what are you doing where am i i am uh hibernating uh writing out the quarantine in the uh, outskirts of houston texas um uh, and uh, what am i doing i uh well, last week was a spring break for our kids, so we, we 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 did it like spring break. We let them do whatever they want, and for them, it's pretty much just uh, for my son being on the Xbox and for the girls being on the iPad with your daughter, my little one, with your with your stepdaughter, and uh, and my oldest one on her on her phone, FaceTiming with her friends. So they had a week off, and now that spring break is off, they have their own Zoom meetings they, on in school booths, and they're with with their schools at respective schools and, and their after schools activities like soccer and dance and um and that's what we've been doing but how you know for me to a routine dude i think the most important thing that i can do during this time is have a routine for myself and for our family because i notice the days that i don't have routine i feel completely lost i don't know if that happens to you but without a routine especially in the morning i'm completely out of it like all day just it's just something weird i don't know what to do with myself a little bit yes man a little bit man. i think i have add and that's why like i need to go work out i need to do something and so the days like you're saying then this past week when it was spring break that we were just like oh going to sleep whenever we want yeah. waking up wherever you want like the days and the night start blurring right and you're like what day is it and then it's like oh my god i'm tired of watching tv i'm tired of sitting on the couch and watching tv like i need to go and like do something but I mean, thank God we have this, man. Like, we're so spoiled. Like, imagine doing a quarantine in, like, oh, the 1918 quarantine where they had nothing. Like, imagine how I that thing imagine was. that. I can't. And yet people yeah, are complaining yeah. right now. But you know what I did during spring break? I watch The Sinner, season three. Vic Soto in the house. Bro, I gotta say, I love that show. I didn't know what to expect. It's, without giving any spoilers, let's not tell uh, the audience anything about the show, except that it's a crime drama that is weird and it goes into some dark places, but I love it, man. I'm really, one, I'm very proud of you. Detective Big Soto, everybody. Big round of applause. <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for watching. How was yeah, it, I mean, how I, was I, putting that? Uh, I loved working on the show, man. It was, uh, I was already a fan of the show before I got cast. This is just when the offer came in, I was stoked. And then, uh, uh, and then when I got, to see the cast, like it was, you know, Chris Messina, Matt Bomer, Carissa Fatenley, Jessica right, Hegg, and it. Bill Pullman. Is Matt Bomer, you know, as sexy as he is in person as he is on camera? Is he? Yes, he's, 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 <laughs> he's just as good looking in person as he is on, as he is on camera. It's a dreamboat. Yeah, he's, he's got these dreamy blue eyes, deep blue eyes. Yeah, and he's a nice dude, man. He's a really nice guy, man. And 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 he worked really hard man he worked he him and bill pullman man they had some long hours on that set and they worked hard and it shows man when watching when watching the episodes man yeah. it showed all that hard work that he did man he's so good in this season man matt bomer and bill pullman, I mean, bill everybody, pullman. Chris, 
how Chris Messina. what did you feel did you feel like you were learning something from him because we're always learning did you feel oh, okay tell me what did you feel like you learned from being on that set i mean i went to school just go, go, being on on this show i mean it, just from the beginning um the rehearsal process we got there like a week before to do rehearsals and i'm there preparing like i usually do you know looking over the script you know the first two and and uh doing the you know, the background on my character, calling friends that are cops and detectives and stuff. And then we got to the rehearsal process and it had nothing to do with the script. It's what they call dream work. And bro, I, I can't even explain it, but it was, it was we were working with, with this lady, Kim, who was lovely as well. And for a whole week, she just put us through these exercises and, and, and we'd go home and had dreams and then we'd come and talk about what we dreamt about and then she connected it to our character and also like almost on like on a deeper level like why why do you think we got casted for this show at this specific Whoa. moment in time and 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 i'm telling you man it, it took it to a, to a different level so just from that just the rehearsal process i just feel like i learned so much and and i grew so much on my on my uh, uh um like my toolkit like my skills as an actor just just from that like the way she I, was I feel like on- i I'm confused. So she was brought on by the production, the the actual company that was doing the show to work with all the actors. Yeah, yeah, by by the EP, yeah, the executive producer. Yeah. Why, she why, why did they bring her? Because he's uh, the executive producer, Derek Simmons. He's he's done this type of work before. I think he used to work before prior to being a you know, showrunner for this, um, and and he's done this for years. And I think they did it. Uh, he did it with uh, Jessica Biel in season one. And uh, this season, season three, we all got lucky that you brought her in and, and the whole cast, all the six of the, all the series regulars, we got to do this work for, for a whole week with, uh, with, with him, with the executive producer and with her. With, and I'm telling you, it was, it was on a different level. It was, it was just, it, it was unexplainable, but it just, it was almost, it almost like opened up like some floodgates or something like that. From, wow. The way that she trained, <laughs> what's her name and where does she train? Does she train people in New York or is she training here in LA? She's in LA. Her name is Kim. I can't. I'm blanking on her last name right now. Um, but she works in LA, and and and, and she does work with the actors all the time. And she even has other people that that do the work for her. Like there's group sessions and there's private. I know she's booked up all the time, and I think it's a little expensive. But but man, it's worth it. It's like you having your well, personal. If you can get that name for me, I'll put it out the bottom. So in the description, we'll put her name and whatever information we get from Eddie. Because that's cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, people might yeah, want to look her up. And for you, what do you think got you that role? Now, now going back to that, like what they ask you, what was that moment or what happened in your life that you got to become a series regular on a TV show, on a hit TV show too? Well, uh, well, I mean, I think initially the character description kind of fit me very well. Like Vic Soto is supposed to be a former Marine. I was in the Marines. Uh, he's a rising star in the Northchester Police Department, you know, like, so he's very ambitious. I think I'm very ambitious. He's supposed to be Latino. Uh, he's a devout Catholic, although I'm not a Catholic anymore, but I grew up uh, as a Catholic. So I think uh, just on the basic information is very similar to me. Um, and then I just went in and auditioned, man. I let it go and they saw it. They saw it. And, you know, I got lucky that they saw it, man. Sometimes they see it. Sometimes they don't. How long you been? That's it, man. How long you been uh, pursuing acting or working in the world of acting? Oh man, uh, so at least maybe like fifteen years, like I guess, like since like okay. I got my first professional gig, like paid gig, TV gig, maybe like fifteen years, around fifteen years or something like that. Yeah. And why? Yeah, why so acting? it's been a while, dude. Yeah, but why acting? Why did you choose to become an actor? Man, I think in the beginning, I, I, I ponder on this question a lot now that I'm getting older, right? So in, uh, I, I started acting in college for, uh, in freshman year of college. I, you, know, they, you know how speech is a required class when you're a freshman in college, right? Yeah. Was that, was that like that? So, Education, so yeah. Right. So when I, uh, when I was at this the, uh, orientation for the speech class, the professor said that, uh, that we were going to have to do three speeches for our final grade. And I was terrified of speaking in public I'm, I'm, I'm very shy or I thought I was very shy and so I, I was dreading having to make these three speeches and then she said if we audition for the speech and theater department play just for auditioning we would get five points on our final grade and if we got into the play we would get 10 points on our final grade oh hallelujah. So I, was like, <laughs> I, I was like I'm gonna need all the help I can get so I'm gonna go audition and I went in an audition and the director of the play gave me the lead role dude he gave me the lead role and uh 
and and before you know it, two years later, I changed schools, changed majors, and he ruined all my plans. <laughs> but I think in the beginning, in the beginning, why I was drawn to it, which I didn't know that I was going to be drawn to it, is because um, I think specifically, like where I grew up, I grew up in Astoria, Queens, and being a Latin males, like you hold in your feelings, you are holding your feelings, and the only emotion you're allowed to express is anger, because that makes you more manly if you're angry. But everything else, you you, you know, you hold in your tears, you hold in, and the Marines in boot camp, it was like that too, like even you hold in your, your happiness, you know, even if you're something, is, you, you, if you laugh while you're on formation, you drop down to do push-ups. Um, and I think that's what attracted me in the beginning, that I was just able to let all my feelings out, and because I wasn't being myself, it felt to be okay to to be emotional, to be you know uh, uh, being in love with somebody, even if it was just pretend for five minutes. Uh, but I think it was just this 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 uh, permission to let my feelings out, which is what I think attracted me in the beginning. But I think what kept me going through all these years is, is that I realized is that I'm a chismoso like my mom. I just love stories, man. I love stories. Like when I was chismoso, little, we'll, we'll, we'll tell the audience if they don't speak Spanish, chismoso is like a gossip girl. So he's a gossip girl. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like the guys that, like, yeah, like I love meeting new people, especially if they're a little bit older, and I almost feel like I'm interviewing them, and I ask them a million questions, and I genuinely like love, well, dude, like when I met your father in, 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 or here in Houston, when I met your father, like, and he was telling me the stories how he got here and all that, like, dude, that that was like, like that's fun for me, man. Like it was just no, fun hearing people's stories. Yeah. Did you do that to any? Did you do that to Bill Pullman on set? Did oh. You? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was in the beginning, I was trying to be like, you know, courteous and give him his space. But I was I was not I did it to all of them. I was I the minute I met Chris Messina, I started asking him that when I had my you know, when uh, uh, I, I had my scenes with Matt Bomer, uh, when we were off, I, I started asking him to, uh, with Carissa Fitenley, another one, uh, another cast uh, members, the, the that rehearsal week, uh, the first time that we met, we walked across the bridge, Williamsburg Bridge in, into Manhattan, and we hung out for like two, three hours. And man, I, I she must have been like, is this guy writing a book? I asked her like a million questions. <laughs> I, I found out her whole life story. It's like, it's just, I like, it, I like, I like telling people stories and just being part of a story, especially when you connect to like a story, like a script or a story that you believe in. Like, it's as cheesy as it sounds, man. It, it feels like it fulfills me. It feels. I feel like I'm alive. <laughs> how, how did you feel like after reading the full script, the uh, the whole all is it eight episodes of The Sinner? Yeah, eight episodes. How did yeah. you feel? It's a dark show. It's a very dark show. It is. It is. Uh, but I was very excited because, like I told you, I was I was a fan of the show, and and then seeing the whole progression, the whole arc, I was wondering. I was like, well, how is this going to end? And when I got to the to the episode eight, I, I was just like this is so good i was like i hope just the execution of this is just as good as what i read and uh and i think it was i was happy Dude, it's it. amazing I was happy with it's the, amazing with the... like i really was addicted i we started watching it last week um and i was watching because of you you know you're in it and i wanted to watch it and support but i fell in love with that show okay, then. no i fell in oh, love okay. after episode one i was hooked um have you seen now, season one or season two no I've only seen season three, so I don't oh, know. I should get out, man. Like that's the one thing that they're I got a little confused about. Bill all Bill all character in um his arc, but it didn't really matter because the show is so good that I was like, something obviously happened to him before. It's in season one and two, but um, it's still good. It all makes yeah. Sense. He's he's a through line through all the seasons, but okay. it's an anthology series, so all the seasons are separate stories. The only the only through line is Bill Pullman's character. Uh, but you don't need to watch uh, any of the other seasons to understand what's going on, no, as you, you already don't. know. But man, the first two seasons are really good too. Jessica Biel in season one, she's so good, man. And now that I did that rehearsal, now I know why she was like, like what you know. What really? No, but seriously, I want that information. Um, talking about acting, what has been one of the best roles that you've ever had? What do you think was one of the roles that really was just like, wow, what a dream? This one. This, this one. one? This was a dream. Yeah, this one. I got because I, I got to work with Bill Pullman. I got to be a, a a a detective, a good cop at that too. You know, I usually play the bad guy, the drug dealer. Like I I would I always say this joke all the time, but it's kind of true. Like uh, when I first got this, I was just happy that I wasn't a drug dealer and I got to speak English. I was just happy about that. <laughs> no, but hey, you know what? That's but, a big thing. That's, 
you just put me onto something that I want to ask you. How do you feel that Hollywood uh, treats people like ourselves, Latinos, or people of color, black, through stories? Because you just said it. You've only been cast in certain roles that make us look negative. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I think on a personal note, right, like, I don't care what character I play now. I don't care what character I play, even if I'm playing like a, a quote unquote bad guy or a drug dealer or anything, as long as I connect to the story. As long as the story is not some stereotypical, cheesy kind of like, if, 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 there's, if I connect to the story, I don't care what, what, what part of the puzzle piece I'm in, as long as it makes sense to me, right? But I think as a whole, in general, I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's obvious, it's not, it's not a secret that, you know, marginalized people get stereotyped, you know, and, yeah. and, 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 and it matters and, and it becomes a cycle because, um, I mean, I see it with my kids, like, you know, I, I always wonder, like, what, what does it matter? But it matters because kids, when they see themselves on TV, it, it, it matters to them. And so when they see someone that looks like them always being uh, portrayed in a negative light, always being the, the violent one, the, the, the negative one, or the, the, the um, uh, not, not the victim, the, the oppressor, or, you know, it, it makes them, you know, and I think I see it in, in me when I was little, like, I, didn't, I never saw people that look like me, even in Spanish TV, even in Univision and, tele, and, and all the telenovelas that my, that my mom used to watch, that I used to watch, like, all the good guys looked like they were European, they were all blonde, yeah. beautiful, with blue eyes, you know, and, and, and all the, you know, all the pestizos, all the indios, like, I look, all the indios, we're like the, either the peasants or the bad guys, you know? So it's like, and then I grew up and look, and that's what I get to play. I play the bad guy all the time. Until Belcanto that I played a, I played a vice president there. So I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that one too. In, yeah. in this one. But I still remember you in Narcos. I mean, they, yeah, you played a bad guy in Narcos. And you <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Look, everybody talks about Narcos, but I mean, I like Narcos. No, I love it. Season of Narcos. I love Jesse Narcos. And I was, like, their, their, it, season three was really good. And the season that I was in, season two of Narcos Mexico, like I played a drug dealer there. Yeah, but, I, I, you know, I liked, I liked the show. It's very well written. And it's, uh, I mean, it's based on a true story. So Yeah, we can't do anything about those. But I do feel that it's important to have, like you just said, positive portrayals of people of color on screen so that kids that are growing up are seeing that. And I think you don't really take into account until you're a parent and you start seeing how your kids are absorbing or observing and absorbing the world around them. And through media is a big, big spot. I mean, that's, that's one of the reasons why I really like Hentified, man. Hentified. Like I started watching Hentified and I know some people are like, it's a hit or miss. But with me, I really liked it because I just really thought that it was like, normal looking like authentic latino people just being themselves like you know like you like jj could have been any other race or anything and it was just you know it was just about a, a kid trying to con a, a young kid trying to connect to his baby mama you know trying to make things right and trying to try to help his grandfather you know what I'm and, it, and it was just authentic but it was good seeing people that look like me just being themselves and not the stereotypical like oh cholo or bad guy just real it felt real to me and, and I, I told you this before, but like uh, in one of the episodes, oh wait, it might be a spoiler alert, but one of the episodes I really connected with one small scene that I didn't think I was gonna connect at all, but I was there like sitting there crying. I'm like, why am I crying? Why am I crying about? And then it hit me, it was like, oh, cause I'm just like these kids. I'm like excited or I feel emotional about like people that look like me just mm -hmm. being in a good show, being real, being themselves. You know, like, Dude, I thought like, of that. Like, finally. And again, that's a Netflix show, Hentified. So is On My Block. And I don't know if you saw oh, the- Oh, my kids my kid, my kid love On oh, My I Block. Oh, I love that show. Um, and Andrea's on it, so I'm, I'm more in love, but I do love that show. And there's one episode in this new season, three, that honestly had me tearing up, and it's because it's all about the dads. It showed men, and I'm gonna ask you this question. What do you think is masculinity today for us? Like, what is masculinity, true masculinity? Wow, well, you know, that's a, that's such a so many layers to that question because I feel like that the definition of that is changing in different demographics. I think in what you people would call the left, the liberals, or progressive, that toxic masculinity is always pointed out a lot, and, and I think it should. You know, so I think uh, males or, or, or men are kind of shifting their idea of what being a, a what being masculine means, right? 
but because there's so much like that on the left, I think in the in the other and on the right, it's all uh, it, it's kind of almost pulling the other way, like like oh those 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 snowballs and then and then you know with with the current administration where it's like showing strength and strong like like it's it, I feel like it's getting more toxic on this side because on this side it's trying to be less toxic if that makes any sense. No, it does. Like I didn't even see it that way, but I think you're right. Yeah. It's, it's a, and we're also living in a different age and I do feel like being Latino, we've been told to hold all our emotions, to not show anything, to always be tough. But I do see the downfall of that because all that energy, all those feelings do stay in our bodies. And if they don't find a way out, they sometimes manifest themselves in a negative way, which is what you were saying about acting. That's without ever knowing acting did the same thing for me. I come from finance and I was a straight up capitalist thought one way started getting, I got here to Los Angeles, started training and started getting in touch with my emotions. It felt really weird. And it was very uncomfortable to show your vulnerable side in front of 20, 30 people in class. And you know, some of these classes have these pretty girls that you're like trying to impress. And all of a sudden now you gotta be vulnerable and cry. And, and that cry became a real cry that you can control. And so yeah, I, I think, Having a place to let go of that emotion, to be able to talk about your feelings, I think is extremely important, especially today. I mean, we have so many people complaining about mental health. I'm like, it's because no one's talking. They're not ex expressing themselves. Um, but I do I mean, feel yeah, like I it. acting I did that. Agree with you, man. Yeah, and I think when you said it, I was like, that connects to me because that's how it's been for me too. Oh, so good. I'm glad I, I'm, I'm glad I can bring you some self awareness, dude. Oh, you're the best. <laughs> you're the best. Hey, and so tell me. No. Nope. Okay, so you've done these. You did this TV show. You're probably going to be on season four. Hopefully, please bring Eddie back. Season four. Um, what are, what else are you working on right now? Well, again, I'm working on my. There was two films that uh, that it was going to be on. That it was that it was almost there. The ink was always there, but then this whole quarantine started, and everything is on. Um, on pause and I've been, I've been doing some self tapes for some other stuff. So, so there's a lot of things that are in the queue, I guess, after this whole thing ends and who knows what's going to happen, but I, I, nothing is guaranteed. Well, I mean, nothing is ever guaranteed, even, even if we weren't in quarantine, but nothing is set yet. So I don't know what's going to happen when those things are going to start shooting. And now I don't know if they're going to, if they're going to co conflict, if they're going to, if there's going to be a schedule conflict. I, I, so I don't know. Uh, but right now, like I said, I'm, so I'm, so now that I have this sort of space, this window of, of, of nothing to do, if, if you can say it that way, I, I'm working, I'm, I'm trying to work back on my projects on, on rewriting this script or, or updating the, the draft of in Spanish for this, for this other script. I'm trying to put this, the, the pitch deck for this other project that I, this other film that I, that I, that's set in Colombia. And I'm trying to put that, the, the pitch deck together for that. And why are you doing that? You, you're an actor. You have success coming. Why are you now trying to put projects together? What's making you do? I think that? that's the that's the direction that I want to go. I um, I wanna I wanna be able to tell my stories, whether it's stories that I write or just stories that I you know that I invest in, that I produce. I wanna I wanna be part of the stories that that I'm interested in telling. Why is that and, important um, to you? Because, well, what we just talked about it. I just. I just think that it's time to see something different, to see people that look like me or, 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 or uh, people on the uh, marginalized community. Just, I just want to tell different stories about them because I, although yes, okay, I'm Colombian and so it should be okay for me. So I'm Colombian and yes, in the 1980s, most of the cocaine that was in the US came from Colombia because it was you know, a lot of Colombian drug dealers. But we're more than that, you know, like, the Pablo Escobar story has been like one, two, three, it's been a book. It's like, how many more angles are we going to talk about Pablo Escobar? And there's more than Pablo Escobar. There's Gabriel Garcia Marquez. There's Botero. There's like other, you know, prolific Colombians that, that we can tell their stories. Or there's other a million stories about Latinos or, or just like 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 Roma, like Roma, like some people aren't a fan of Roma, but I like Roma because it's just a different face. It's just something something different. It was just I, I even said this to somebody like when she was when uh, Alicia Aparicio was on the cover of, of Vogue magazine. Yeah, it was almost like a breath of fresh air because it was just a different. It was just something different, you know. Like I mean, like I like 
well, I don't eat hamburgers, but let's say like, I like hamburgers, right? If I ate meat, I would like hamburgers, right? I, I, I would eat hamburgers. But if you eat a hamburger every day, it's like at some point you're going to want pizza, you know? And I feel like right now in Hollywood, it's just the same stories over and over and over the same faces. And I understand from a business pers perspective why, you know, it has to be certain, uh, you know, actors with some sort of uh, notoriety and stuff like that. But but still, I just think that there's room for so much more, you know? So you're trying to step into more of the business role of, of show business? Well, I don't think, me and you have spoken, but to put this out there, I don't think uh, uh, I'm, I'm very skilled in the, or I'm very knowledgeable on the business side of this. I think that's where I lack a little. So I like surrounding me with people, kind of surrounding myself with people like you who, who that, the business side, uh, a little bit more savvy on that side. So I, I do want to either go into uh, business with someone or partner up with someone who who has who my weaknesses are their strengths because i think i i would be more or i think i'm interested more in producing and being more on the creative side yeah but i would want to partner up with somebody who can sort of balance me out on the on the business side of films you know on the, yeah. on the business side of it. And that's what I think a lot of people don't realize is how many people are involved on a TV show, on a on a movie. There's a lot of people behind the scenes that do all the business stuff, like even just selling the movie, making sure that it goes into different theaters or different countries. Um, yeah, movies I have mean, a lot of people. I mean, what you I mean, if you think about it, when I, when I started doing this, I didn't even think about distribution. I was like, distribution, what? what? But not like that's like the most important thing. Like, what's the point in putting all all your assets and everything into making a film, and then it doesn't get sold, or it doesn't get nobody ever sees it? It's like you did all your hard work for who? I don't know for my mom. <laughs> you know, you know. So it's like distribution oh, that no one even thinks about, it, and that's the business side of things. It's very very true. And so for you, uh, we're gonna wrap this up. Tell me, what is some advice you can give someone who is probably gonna pursue a career in acting or in show business? What is something you can give as advice? Uh, my advice would be don't do it. You just go do something else. Go, go start doing something else because this is going to be a lot of hard work. And if that person still pursues it and still asks me more, then that is the key thing that you need to do in this because you, it, you never know how it's going to go. It could take 15, 20 years or it could take five months for you to like, you know, hit something where you can start or, or work on a, on a consistent basis, right? But I think when your why is strong enough, then it doesn't matter what advice you get from people, like whether they say, yes, you're great, or no, you suck. When your why is strong enough, all that is just either reaffirming or eh. And so I think that's what people need. So my advice would be that, don't do it. And if you still want to do it, then you don't need any advice from me or anybody. You'll figure it out on your own your why is there you have to have that passion in there i mean that's the only thing that kept me going for all these whatever i said 15 or however long i've been doing this bro because you I, know the grind the grind is up and down right and the grind is <laughs> and dude we've had we've no had joke friends, especially luck. when you got family yeah exactly yeah exactly. it's not easy exactly. it's not easy i question myself why did i do this to myself but like you said it's just something drives you and now you're in it so keep going but that's great advice look at eddie with his awesome advice all right, bud. So that's it. Thank you so much, man. That was great advice. It was great to talk to you. It's great seeing you. And uh, yeah, man, I look forward to seeing more projects with you. And um, yeah, hopefully this quarantine will be ending soon. Thanks, Rico. Yeah, and when it does, man, can't wait to uh, see you, hug you, and have share some drinks, man. Wear your gloves and a mask. That's all I ask. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I will. I will. <laughs> Thanks, Rico. Man. All right, brother. Talk to you later, man. And there you have it. That's today's show. It was an interview with Eddie Martinez, Vic Soto from The Center on the USA Network. Now my boy is on fire and I'm gonna put some of his social media credentials down below. So if you wanna follow him, definitely check him out and check out the show. It's on USA Network Center season three. And I'm also gonna put a link to the acting coach that Eddie recommended from The Center. I have a lot of uh, acting friends who probably want to know who this lady is. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel, hit the like button, and I'll see you next time.